Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to Soda Lake United Methodist Church. My name is Alex Rosso, and it's my joy to be the pastor of this community. I wanted to welcome you, and uh, we hope this today that you will hear God speaking to you, speaking uh, new life into uh, things that you might already be doing, or to, to encourage you to, to try new things and to challenge you in the week ahead. And so I wanted to uh, bring a couple of announcements. Uh, the first is a uh, is a mistake that I made in the bulletin. So if you look at the back of the bulletin, it'll have uh, uh, things that are going on in the life of the church. And uh, this week, uh, the, the Bray family is not hosting the Wednesday night meal. I made a mistake. It is actually the Lions Club. And, uh, and so it'll be a, a chilly extravaganza. The Bray family will be hosting it on the 20th. So I'm sorry if I, I might have made a made of the great family anxious about being prepared for this week, but also I apologize to the Lions Club for not putting it in there uh, and having that correct. And so the Lions Club will be hosting a chili extravaganza this week, the 6th, for the Wednesday night meal. And then also there's a sign-up sheet in the, in the, in the foyer for uh, poinsettias for, for Advent and for the Christmas Eve service. If you would like to uh, 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 donate a uh, Money, so you can have to be a memory of a loved one. Uh, the sign-up sheet's in the foyer, and it's $8 per plant, and it's due, the order's due next uh, Sunday. And so Sunday, next Sunday will be your last opportunity. Uh, then also the All Church Conference is uh, December 3rd at 7 p.m. at Elmont United Methodist Church, and that is just uh, take 24 to 75 Highway and go north, and it's off of 62nd Street. Uh, and then also, there's a church-wide Advent study, a faithful Christmas through the eyes of Joseph, and a sign of achievement for that is in the foyer. There'll be uh, three offerings, Tuesday morning, Wednesday evening, and Thursday evening, and so I'd encourage you to sign up for that so we can grow as a grow together and grow uh, closer to Jesus in that. And so if you would have any other announcements to share with the community, I wanted to open it up. If, uh, uh, Jane or Francis, do you want to expand on the Lions Club announcement? Okay. <laughs> Mike, you've been, uh, been volunteer. <laughs> Wednesday night we're going to have a soup supper trail in our stuff. It's going for the many projects that the Lions Club does. We do the Avenue of Flags. Donate uh, Halloween. Uh, we do a lot of good for the community, so we like for you to come out Wednesday night to our soup supper. Jelly extravaganza, Mike. <laughs> chili, chili extravaganza. <laughs> <laughs> XYZ will be at the Baptist Fellowship Hall at 5 o'clock on Tuesday. Join me in the opening prayer. 
Creator God, we gather here today, we gather around your table to, to nurture one another, to support one another, to be in communion with one another, and to be in communion with you. Open us to the movement of your spirit, not only today, but in the future. Amen. Will you please stand as we sing, Shout to the Lord.
learn to be more generous. Do you know what more being, what generosity is or being generous is? Yeah, to be nice, yes. To be nice to others. And and so other ways you can do it is, is a, a sharing your time with others or, or sharing your ears with one another and listening when maybe a friend's having a bad day or sharing with those that might not be uh, have all the things that, that you have. And so what I wanted to do is, because people were generous in giving uh, to the church for the trunk or tree, I wanted to be generous to you and give you, uh, give you these things. And so you can choose from either uh, a stretchy, sticky skeleton, or you can choose between uh, vampire teeth. Okay. And so I wanted to, uh, to do this, and, and I'm also being generous to your parents because I'm not giving you candy. <laughs> And so does someone want to pray before we before you go down with this this Christy, Mr. Darren? Dear God, thank you for food and thank you for my dad and mom. Amen. And thank you for the church. Amen. <laughs> you might uh, speak into our life. May we be uh, challenged. We, may we be encouraged. May we be comforted in what you are telling us and speaking to us today. 
Amen. And so as we have gone through the fruit of the Spirit, does anybody remember the, the four that we have done so far? We've done joy, peace, patience, and kindness. And so this week we are going to be looking at the fruit of the Spirit, generosity. But before we do that, I want us to, uh, to get in this habit that we've been doing, and that's reciting Galatians 5.22 through 23. And so the words will be up on the screen, but would you join me in saying Galatians 5.22? The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And so as I was looking into generosity, I noticed there's a lot of research about humans. As, as humans, we are drawn to our own self-interest. And, it, and, it's, and it's good research, but it's, it seems to be that we have this pro, propensity to look out for ourselves, and that's the historical research I, I, I looked at looked at this week. But then there's also the, uh, a lot of new research coming out about humanity and our this deep channel that we have in in us, this these deep roots that we have in us that are geared towards being generous. And so that's what I want to, to dive into to this week. And because this, this new research uh, has shifted the philosophy about how uh, sociologists are seeing human beings and this, has this deep channel of generosity in us, I was like, why is that implanted in us? And I saw that this week as I was going around trick-or-treating with, uh, with, with Claire and Lydia and one of their friends, is that when we would go, we, we did it late because we went after the trunk or treat and some houses we went to that had their, their bowl of candy uh, on, their, on their entryway. And we saw that in some of the cases there was like one or two pieces of candy in there. And uh, the first house that we went to, we, they, they said, oh, we don't want to, we don't want to take that. We want the candy because they saw kids that were coming up behind it. We want them to have it. And so they just they went up and they left the candy there and they, we just went to the next house. And I was like, that's, that's interesting. Like I would have taken it and then uh, they said they, they, they have enough. And, but, and so it's implanted in us. Like as kids, we have this, we want this to be generous with one another. And so we went to a, a couple houses later, we saw that their candy bowl was empty. And, uh, and on it, it had a note that said, take two. And so who, who knows if, if some of the kids took more than two or maybe an adult took more than two. But they took some of their own candy and put it, and put it back, back, back in there. And so that is just a, a, the simplest form of, of generosity. But it's within us. And seeing the, the kids that were doing it, they weren't just my daughters. It was other kids that were doing it. It is implanted in us. And that's what I think this new research uh, that's coming out reveals is those deep channels of generosity that are within us. And but then, so they're within us, so the, how do we unlock that, right? So uh, how do we unlock that generosity that is within us? And I think that becomes to look at this, uh, this uh, abundance and knowing that even when we might not have a lot, there is an abundance around us. Each one of us has gifts. Each one of us has gifts, uh, and I'm not just speaking financially, I'm talking about time. Each one, of us, each one of us in this room has the gift of time, right? How do we spend our time? And so if we think of time as a gift, how, how might we be better stewards of that gift of time that each one of us has? That's a gift that all of us in this room have, and we can, each, we can share that with others. We can share that by, by, li by listening to someone. We can share that by uh, writing someone a note. We can just share it with, by being present with someone and not saying anything at all. And then we all have uh, different abilities, skills, talents. How can we be better stewards of those, those talents and be generous with those gifts, abilities, and talents that we have? As I look around this room, I see uh, people that have a lot of different talents than I have, a lot of different gifts than I have. And I know that when our talents and gifts are shared uh, with the community, with other people, uh, that, that they see a, a, a bigger picture of who God is, who God might be, and who God can be. And so that's what I think these channels within us were called to share them with one another. 
Because it's not a gift if we keep it to ourselves, right? Like in the most, if I, and then speaking of gift in a very simple level, a gift is something that, that, that we share with others. Uh, I think about uh, the times when, times when I buy uh, things buy for myself. Is it, is it really a gift? I like to, to dress it up and say it's a gift, but it's just really something that I need and I'm giving myself an excuse to get for myself. And so uh, a gift is something to be shared. And for all of us who might have uh, grandkids, we might have kids. Uh, when, we, when we sit around uh, the, the Christmas tree at Christmas or for their birthday parties, the most joy we get is when they, they open, open that and their eyes light up. They, 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 are the big, they become the biggest eyes in the world and it doesn't matter what it is. They're just excited to receive. And so... Who, I, I want you to have that picture. The last time you, you, you were able to give someone a gift, what did their face look like? Do you, want, do you want to share their expression? Can I look at their expressions like as I go around the room? Like I see some people laughing. I think joy. Like, like I'm looking at Barry's face right now. There is like he's the most joyful person, I think. Like, like that's what I picture when someone receives a gift. That face is so excited, right? And I think that's what happens when we, when we share our own gifts and talents and we serve one another. There, people are that excited. But then there's also benefits for us, right? Because we become excited too, right? Does anybody get excited when, when they're, they're serving people? Or maybe you're not in the moment, but when you look back at it and you're like, I, I, I enjoyed that a lot. I remember uh, last year when we went, went to Harvesters and we were loading up these big stacks of bread. And it, uh, you, can, you can look at me. I might not, I don't look like the strongest person, uh, but I remember like seeing like Jackson and everyone and, and Carly uh, wheeling those things and helping and pushing them around. And we got joy out of moving all that bread. I think we ha there was like 1,100 pounds of bread that we moved from uh, the, the storage to the trucks that were being delivered out in the community. We get experience joy when we are generous. We, we experience happiness when we are generous. Uh, patience, we can be generous with our patience. Uh, does anybody know how to be generous with their patience? It, it, it's hard, it's hard but, it's a, it, but we can be generous with our patience. And so all these fruit of the Spirit, we talked about, they all, as we practice one, we're practicing other fruit of the Spirit. And so I came across this uh, passage of Scripture uh, when Jesus is talking about uh, fruit, and it is from John 15, so I wanted to read it to you. Jesus says, I am the true vine, and my Father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit he prunes, so that I will even be more fruitful. You can already clean you are already clean because of the word I've spoken to you. Remain in me, and as I remain in you, no branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire and burned. If you remain in me and my rem words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. This is my Father's glory, that you bear much fruit showing yourselves to be my disciples. So are you bearing fruit? Are you bearing fruit? And as you, as you reflect as on this scripture, I am the vine, you are the branches. We all can bear fruit. We all can bear fruit. We all do bear fruit. And so the, the Apostle Paul says that uh, being fruit, uh, and when we practice this fruit of the Spirit, that when it is a sign of God's grace working inside of us. Practicing the fruit of the Spirit and resembling the fruit of the Spirit, being the fruit of the Spirit to others is a sign of God's grace working inside you. 
And so part of the new research that I, I, I referenced about these deep channels of generosity working inside of us is that generosity leads to more generosity, right? We, I shared the story of my friend who was, in a, who was in, a, in a drive through window and the person in front of her bought her meal and then she continued to kind of try to practice that generosity herself. So generosity is contagious. Are you bearing fruit? Are you practicing the fruit of the Spirit? Are you practicing generosity? Because practicing generosity leads to more generosity, not only within your life, but in the lives of a community uh, and the world as a whole. Being generous is contagious. That's the first thing in the, the research that I, I led. And then so uh, the other, other part of it says that uh, has a positive effect on the givers. And I mentioned this. And so it, it, the study says that it, it points to uh, that giving, uh, when we give social support to others, when we give time, efforts, and goods, it actually is associated with better health in us as adults. So generosity improves our health. Uh, it's, it said... Uh, Volunteering is associated with a delayed mortality, so you have a longer life if you volunteer for things. Uh, it says that have, generosity appears to have a strong association with psychological health and well-being. And so they did a, the, this research, they did a study, and I found this absolutely fascinating. They did a study of, of older adults and found that those who uh, volunteered regularly, and I know we have those in our, in our congregation that volunteer at the hospital and, and volunteer at, uh, at other places, found that they had a greater quality of life. They reported feeling better. They reported having a, a higher self-esteem, but only if they helped on their own wishes, or on their own accord. If they're forced into helping uh, in these ways, uh, it didn't have the same effects on their life. Other studies show the, the, re the relationship between generosity and happiness. Some, uh, some people, uh, and I think this is what the, the gift uh, part uh, that I was talking about, is when they give to somebody else, it made them happier. And even small acts of kindness, like we mentioned last week, being generous with our acts of kindness helped people feel happy. And so the, it wasn't big acts. It was, it was going along the street and picking up a piece of trash if you see it somewhere. If, if you see something out of place, putting it back in its place. If you see someone needing help to the car, helping them to the car. If they need a door open, open the door. Small acts, generous acts of kindness increased our happiness. And so uh, in relationships, being generous is, is leads to longer-lasting relationships. And so for those of you who, who might be married, being, being generous uh, with, with your spouse, it, it said brings more contentment in relationship, brings happiness in relationships. And it, but it's something all of us want to practice, right? Generosity is something all of us want to practice. We all aspire to be more generous. Is that, a, is that a, okay, is a true statement? We all aspire to be more generous? It's something we all want to do. We try to be generous with our time, our talent, our resources. And I think why we might not do it is we might not all recognize the abundance that each one of us has in our lives. We all have an abundance of time, Right? We all have abundance in our life. And when I, I, I think about how, we, how do we use that abundance to bless others? How can we be generous with the abundance in our life, whatever it might be? And so I just wanted to show you ways in which you have been generous with the abundance in your life. Uh, just in the past, uh, I think it's the past eight or nine months. And so I have a bunch of pictures that, the, that Jackson will kind of scroll through. And so this past week, uh, my best estimation is that 250 to 300 kids walked through and uh, or took part in the trunk or treat. And so I, 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 have, I have a picture of just one part of it. They kind of came and, and went in, in rows. And then this past year at VBS, we had over 40 kids that, were, that took part in VBS where they grew in, in relationship. Uh, a lot of them that didn't come to the church, but they grow in their relationship with God, grow in their relationship 
with one another right here in the sanctuary and, 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 and downstairs. Wednesday meal, we're, we're, we're generous with Wednesday meal with the abundance that we have that we share with other people. A hundred people come about a week. Uh, 30 people a week uh, have been coming this past, uh, this past fall to grow in their relationship with God, to grow in their relationship with one another as we studied uh, the Bible and other books. Uh, we packed over 100 hygiene ki kits that all that stuff was, was donated for people that were impacted by the, the flooding uh, in Kansas and Nebraska, impacted by the tornadoes that came through uh, this in the past eight months. Uh, the Good Neighbor Mission, third grade Bibles, Sunday schools, both the kids uh, that is happening now and, and home builders. Uh, we also donated over 170 hats, gloves, and scarves. We wrote 100 letters to people who were incarcerated. We gave uh, uh, gifts to families who don't have gifts for their kids at Christmas. We prepared meals for, those pe for people at the Ronald McDonald House. We prepared meals for kids uh, and college students on Washburn's campus. We did bingo, we did the children's choir, Harvest Home, right? And that's just a list of some of the things that we are did with the, the gener our abundance, that we were generous with and sharing, not only just as a church uh, family, but as a community. That's just some of the things. And so I, I mentioned, a, 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 the, I wanted to end, uh, begin to wrap up by showing this video of one of the most generous things I saw this week, and I saw it on Facebook. And so if you would play this video, Jack, play that video for us, Jackson. And so this is captured on someone's doorbell. Because there's no candy in it. And that kid emptied out his, uh, emptied out his bag and put it in there. Right? What, are, what, what is your abundance? That kid shared his abundance with the kids that were walking up to, the, walking up to that house with him. What is your abundance that you can share, not only with people in this room that you know, but with people in the community that you don't know? That kid was not only sharing his abundance with people he knew. He didn't know the kids that were coming up after him. And he didn't care. Right? He knew he had something that he could be generous with and share. And so that's the story I want to have on your heart as you look in your bulletin, because you'll see this in there. And uh, the, the first thing that you see in there is this right here. And so how can you be generous with your gifts? And so this, the first form is the service commitment form. And so what I'd ask each of you to do is... Uh, there's a, there's a lot of gifts there. A lot of gifts that I don't have. A lot of gifts that the person next to you doesn't have. But what are your gifts that you might begin to share, not only with your, your church family, but with the community as a whole? And so I want you to, to go through that list and fill it out, circle it, uh, and, and bring it back to worship. And so... Next, next Sunday we'll, uh, and the Sunday after, the 10th and the 17th, I'll invite you to, uh, to there'll be a time where we can come up and we can put these uh, commitment forms uh, on the altar. And so I invite you to do that. Because each one of you has at least one or two, three, maybe five gifts on this, on this packet that you can share. And then also in there is the financial commitment card for 2019. Because all those things that happened up there wouldn't be possible without your, your, your financial commitment. And so what, what I want you to do is to look, turn it over on the back. I want you to fill out the front, but turn over on the back. And this is a, a chart that reflects the, the, the giving in our community. And if you picture of it as steps, if you, if you aren't on this, on this chart, I would want you to take the, the first step and begin to, to be on this chart. And whatever that, that looks like and what are your, whatever you are able to do. Uh, and, but if you are on, the, are on this, maybe you can move to the next step and move over one step. And so I want you to pray, prayerfully discern how you can commit both your service, your gifts, your talents, but also 
your finances. And so what this looks like, uh, I'll share what this looks like in our household. Uh, because I didn't used to all, always do this until I met, until I met Gina. And, uh, it, and it was a struggle for me to be on this, this chart 13 years ago. It was a struggle. And uh, how I started, I, I said, I, don't, I, 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 I said, are you sure we want to do this? Like, are you sure? But when I saw that what, our, what the church was doing and, and, and the transforming lives and being involved in the community, I said, okay, we, we can do this. And, and it started out uh, as, as a percentage. I said, okay, let's do uh, 3%. And then we gradually, each year we sit down and we pray, how much can, how much are we able to give? And so that's not how much can, or how much are we able to give? And then how can we also push ourselves a little bit? To be good stewards of what God ha has blessed us with. And so it began as 3% in each year. Where how, how can we give more? How can we give more? So we prayerfully discern each year. We put it in a place. This right now, it's, it's on our refrigerator uh, in our house that we, we see. And we'll have conversations about how can we give more this year. Not just with our time and our talents and our gifts. But how can we give of our resources too? And so I want you to, to pray about this. I just don't want you to, to write it down now and, and put it in the offering plate as it comes around right now and in a couple minutes. I want you to, to pray about this and let it sit with you so you can fully discover what, what God might be calling you to. And I want you to do that with the service commitment too. Maybe there's a, a gift on there that you don't see on there, but God says, hey, you know what, Thelma, you're really good at this. Hey, Jan, you're really good at this. They forgot this. Write it down on there. And then bring it, bring it back. And then what we're going what what to try to do is to uh, say, okay, these are the gifts of the congregation. And now how can we foster those gifts and cultivate them? How can we water them? Or Kate, sometimes we might need to, Caden says, we might need to pour, I think fertilizer is what he was saying by pour. How can we fertilize them? How can we cultivate them and make them grow into these awesome things? Because they can. Because our God is a God of abundance and they will grow. So will you please join me in prayer. God, be with us uh, today and to uh, be with us as we sit there with our commitment forms and how we might live into uh, serving you in this faith community, but also in the, the community abroad. Help us to cultivate those gifts that you have given to us. Help us to live into those gifts and to share them with one another so we can fully experience who you are and who you will be in 2020. In your holy name we pray. Amen. So, uh, before we uh, begin the hymn, uh, what we're going to be doing this week is today is All Saints Sunday. And... Uh, as I was reflecting on this past year, there has been a, a lot, each one of us in this room has, has uh, been impacted by deaths, not only of, uh, of, of people in our community, but also personally, and of the extended family that we might have. And so as uh, Kathy and Jane are playing the song, I invite you forward to uh, light a candle in memory of a loved one uh, that has passed. And uh, if you would want to tell me the, that person's name, uh, I, will, I, will, I will read them, or you can also read them too. As you're lighting the candle, just say their name. And so I invite you to come forward and light a candle as Kathy and Jane play One Bread, One Coffee. <coughs>
And so before we begin the, the offering, is, is I am going to attempt, before we do the offering each week, to, uh, to give people the chance to share their stories about why they come to church, or what led them to church, or what Silver Lake United Methodist Church means to them. And so Stan offered to be the first one about the, to talk about what Silver Lake United Methodist Church means to Stan. For, yeah. Well, well what, what was the question again? <laughs> <laughs> what Silver Lake United Methodist Church means to you? Well, that's, uh, that's what I joined the Methodist Church when we moved here from Northwest Missouri. We just joined the Methodist Church up there in Old Country Church. And uh, this is a only the closest Methodist church to come to. So that's the reason I came here. <laughs> and that's the reason I keep coming. <laughs> and I had a good friends. When I came here, it was, I just got out of high school. And there wasn't, actually, they, they had a high school class here, but they had no, no class for my age. So I just kept going to high school class. Then I had a good friend, Wayne Frankel. He will be helping with the, get the Boy Scouts started, Troop 55, and helping with the youth. And I've been on uh, most of the committees in the church. It's just, it's home to me. And I, uh, if I miss a Sunday, It feels like uh, I've missed out a lot because it, it keeps me going for the next week every time and Sunday I come. And Sunday school is one of the main, main things to enjoy being with home village class. I've been with the family for a long time, ever since. We're not home builders now, we've already built. We started out as home builders, but we've already built. But uh, I just. It's just, we moved to Jackson County from Shawnee County, and somebody told us, said, well, you shouldn't be coming back here to church, and you should be going where you're not to. <laughs> we just come back, this, this church does, so that's reason to just keep coming. And we've had some good ministers. We've had some that I didn't hear that much for. <laughs> I'm like that, though, I said. I was here first. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we've had some, I've had some problems and I've had some ministers help me a lot. And I'm going to say we got a good one right here now, too. <laughs> The key things I think when Stan and I were talking was he, he always came back to family. Like the church is, is like family to him. And uh, that's that's what I, when we were talking about this, I, 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 I highly valued that comment. Like the church is, is like family, and it is, it is family. But then also it, that someone had to, someone invited Stan here, and it just started with the Boy Scouts. And that was in 1955, right Stan? 54, I think it was 55. 1954. <laughs> I helped him with you. 1954. <laughs> so, I helped him with you today. <clears throat> but, but that's inspiring too, because you two could also be Walter, just like Walter was to Stan, you could be Walter to someone else. And so with that in mind, I went to invite the ushers to come forward uh, as we have God's ties in our own. Thank you. 
as we enter in this time of prayer, I want to give you all... God, we are grateful for your forgiveness, for your grace that continually makes us continue to work within us, changing us, renewing us, and inspiring us. May we be a living, living example to all those we meet of your love. We pray all this in Jesus' name, who taught his disciples to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us for our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Will you please rise as we sing the hymn, Lord be glorified. <laughs>